It's 1965. India and Pakistan are on the brink of famine. The yearly monsoon rains have failed. In a rapidly rising population, hundreds of millions of families live in extreme poverty. Fortunately, a scientist who's been working in Mexico for two decades has a solution and, along with the Indian government, decides to put it to work. That man was Norman Borlaug. And in the mid-1960s, he began testing wheat varieties that he and his team had developed in Mexico. Two years later, he helped ship 82,000 tons of seed from Mexico, which ultimately saved millions in India and Pakistan. This became known as the Green Revolution. Borlaug was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1970 and became known as the man who saved a billion lives. You are always, if you're an idealist, looking for the perfect. A plant breeder and a geneticist looks, or he hopes in always to find the perfect wheat plant that will become the perfect variety that will uh, be the ultimate. A practical person will recognize that in this particular plant or variety, you have the best possible combination for the moment. And you should exploit it, you should use it aggressively, immediately. Before achieving global fame as a hunger fighter, Borlaug had moved to Mexico from the US to join a government and Rockefeller Foundation initiative known as the Office of Special Studies, aimed at increasing crop production in the country. During the 16 years that Borlaug worked on the project, he bred strains of high-yielding, disease-resistant, semi-dwarf wheat. Strains similar to these helped save millions in India and Pakistan. To build on this success, Borlaug helped found the International Maize and Wheat Improvement Center, commonly known as CIMIT. Since the center's inception, CIMIT scientists have dedicated themselves to fulfilling one mission, maize and wheat science for improved livelihoods. Research for impact, or basically research with impact, has always been uh, the mission and the focus of CIMIT. Norman Borlaug started with this, not just developing new varieties, but he himself made sure that those varieties were used at large scale. Many people think we have these multinational big breeding companies and agri-food companies, so why do we need a CIMIT? If you look at where the private sector invests, they invest in high income countries. Uh, about half of the food crops are grown in low-income countries among, by poor smallholders and we develop the technologies for those smallholders. We've been doing this for 50 years now. Norman Borlock, who started basically CIMIT before that time, but his work in those days was complex but relatively easy. Right now the challenge is much higher. In the first place, we have to realize that more than 900 million people are going hungry to bed every day. We don't see it, but it's happening. They need more food locally. Within the coming 30 years, there will be 2 billion extra people coming. And that will be mainly in the developing countries. The challenge is that wheat demand is increasing because population is increasing. At present, the demand is increasing at the rate of 2% per annum. So while demand is increasing, but prob other problems are increasing, like resources are shrinking. Water is less, heat is more, soil is not so good, new diseases are coming. Simit started drought work in the 70s because drought at that time was already important to farmers. They didn't have irrigation, they couldn't afford it. Now we have climate change. So climate change is a very significant problem in this part of the world. But the problem is, at the same time, we have climate change coming in. The projections are that for every one degree Celsius increase, which is not too far off, we shall be losing roughly 5% of wheat production. So that's very significant. Overall, the estimates are that 40% of maize production in Africa is affected by drought 
and the yield losses range from 10 to 25 percent. For example, we know every five to ten years there is a drought hitting southern Africa. Right now, El Nino is hitting again. A lot of farmer lost their harvest. Because of climatic changes, some of these extremes are becoming more frequent and they cause lots of, uh, lots of problems in terms of food supply and volatility in prices. If the maize uh, is affected by drought very early in the growth stages, it means the farmers are going to have no food. I was reading a paper from Indian Meteorological Department. They did a nice study of our weather pattern of South Asia, where they looked at the last 110 year data of rainfall and temperature and humidity and all those major components. And what they concluded that in last 110 years, there is no significant change in total rainfall. But what has changed is number of rainy days reduced significantly. So the result is, moisture extremes, you know, same piece of land is too wet and then too dry. So the challenge to produce more in a sustainable way is enormous and that's why we need a summit in the world. Systems work is putting research into context and CIMIT works in many different environments. We work in Latin America, we work in Africa, we work in Asia. All those systems are quite different. And even in a given landscape, farmers are different. And it's very important not just to look at technologies, but how those technology fits into different systems for different people to improve their livelihood. A good sustainable intensification strategy in which we will grow more with less will be to combine farmer knowledge through innovation systems with sound scientific research. Sustainable intensification is basically growing more with the same. More grain, but with less work, with less land, with less water, with less resources, so that farmers basically have high yields, stable yields in time, less impact on the environment, and high income for the farmer family. Food security is important, so people have enough to eat, but they also have to have, to have enough uh, of the correct nutrients. And so we do put a lot of emphasis on the nutritional uh, security and the nutritional quality. CIMIT started work, especially with the quality protein maize that has the protein uh, quality to the level almost uh, to that of, of milk, the, the amount of uh, lysine and tryptophan, which are essential amino acids for the human body. Ahora, si hablamos de otro de los problemas de malnutrición, que es la deficiencia de micronutrientes como vitamina A, hierro, zinc, es importante desarrollar eh, más cultivos biofortificados con estos eh, nutrientes. Usar estos cultivos biofortificados es otra de las prioridades. Ya se, ya se encuentran los, bio, los cultivos biofortificados disponibles, entonces es eh, incentivar eh, su uso, también como incentivar eh, el consumo de una dieta bastante diversa. The big challenge today in agriculture is to look at resource use efficiencies, and that includes, of course, the land. That's why we talk about intensification, but also labor, nutrients, and energy. The Simit collections are actually the largest of their kind in the world. We have about 30,000 different varieties of maize and about um, 150,000 different varieties of wheat. And the materials are freely available to anyone in the world. We use a lot of biotechnologies, uh, non-transgenic approaches to, for example, we can now Today, we can read the genomes of our land races. We can start to understand what building blocks do we have in our gene banks that will build the future varieties. We accelerate that process greatly with biotechnology. So what we did previously in 10 years, like developing a disease-resistant varieties, now we can do in three to four years. And one nice example of the work of CIMIT is maize lethal necrosis. The disease first emerged in Kenya in September 2011 
and then was reported in uh, several East African countries. MLN has caused uh, serious damage to the farmers' fields, primarily because almost 90 to 95 percent of the commercial varieties grown in Eastern Africa are highly susceptible to this disease. So our scientists went to our gene bank and to our maize breeding programs here in Mexico. They brought the materials directly to Kenya, started screening. Within three years, we had resistant varieties, or at least partly resistant, and right now we have varieties in the field that are doing well even if there's maize lethal necrosis. Of the several diseases that affect wheat, um, stem rust is considered to be one of the most devastating diseases that actually can cause huge yield losses and can also wipe off wheat production. The battle for stem rust started off as early as Dr. Bolog at Summit when he tried to breed for stem rust resistance. Initial efforts of Dr. Bolog was to address the challenge of stem rust back in Mexico and he wasn't much surprised when he has heard about this disease and the impacts of stem rust UG99 which was affecting the production not only in Africa but also could have a disastrous impact for the rest of the wheat growing community. The low rust is a big challenge in Western India and Pakistan and Nepal. Spot blotch in Eastern India and Nepal and Bangladesh. And now there is wheat blast. So a number of challenges are coming. And how we are trying to address is simple. We are trying to give a package, package of technologies in the form of climate resilient varieties, which can tolerate heat, which can require less water, which have yield potential, and also resistant to different diseases. The big impact for consumers is that Simit uh, is the main provider of wheat thromblasm in developing countries. Around 70% of the wheat produced in developing countries is directly related to the varieties we develop. Mind you, Simit does not work directly with farmers. We work through the seed companies, through the national programs to get to the farmers. So the, the importance of uh, uh, private companies is extremely important, not only just uh, in commercializing seeds, but also in releasing varieties. It's not about us, it's not about Simit, it is about them. Of course, everybody knows Simit from the new varieties that you know, that are resistant for major pests and diseases, that grow faster, that are drought tolerant. Very important uh, technologies that are being used by farmers um, and also adopted by farmers rapidly. But something that many people don't think of is, for example, mechanization. We still see farmers, mainly women, working in the soil with their hands, with simple tools, on, with a child, child on the back, in the sun, and I think that's unacceptable. We are in 2016, we have to make sure that those farmers have also a, a decent life in terms of uh, workload and the way they work. Labour is likely to become a much bigger constraint in future. Less and less people are willing to work in agriculture and don't see it as a, as a future, particularly younger people. So mechanisation is a very important area of research and development for CIMIT. In Africa, we're using the knowledge that CIMIT has got from Asia on using small tractors, two-wheel tractors, and small mechanization. And we see this as a major area that we need to invest in, in in the future. Well, we really have to highlight the economic benefits, and especially immediate uh, benefits in terms of cost savings. And with conventional tillage, you have several passes of the tractor yeah, for plowing, harrowing, evening the field, like, like planking. And these tillage operations are very fuel intensive and, and therefore very costly, especially with increasing fuel prices. With uh, zero tillage, you basically have one single pass with the tractor to place seed and fertilizer into the unplowed field. Yeah, so in Bihar, production costs can actually be uh, decreased by about 25% by using zero tillage as compared to conventional tillage. We are now having a lot of projects in getting small holder tools. So, for example, two-wheel tractors with equipment to help those farmers preparing the soil, harvesting the crop, 
And it's very, very successful because we're doing it in a novel way. The helping entrepreneurs, helping farmers to become entrepreneurs, small businesses, so that they become service providers. एटा जेहेतु अर्थकारी पशुल आम धान चाष करुचु एटा खाई कि मका चाषा अधिक जगह हुए जो कि पड़िया अदरकारी पड़िया जगार जो मका चाष आम करूँ एटा अर्थकारी फसल हिसाब से आम कि टा रोजगार करूँ से आमर पर छुआ पा को भल पाठ पढ़ई पार्बु कि भल ड्रेस खंडे दे पार्बु एमती कि आकाउंट पैसा रखी पार्बु But many people maybe don't realize it that yeah, when you have a new variety, it doesn't mean that you have a better crop and that you have a better livelihood of the people. It's more, you need to have a whole system of growing the crop, but also the social system around it. So we spend a lot of time and effort on gender and youth issues, because most farmers are women. So we have to address the specific questions and issues that they have, that we empower them to develop better food systems. It's the farmers who first experience all these things, you know. So whether it's climate change, climatic variability, any type of stress, farmers experience it. So by tradition and by experience, they know that something is happening. As far as farmers' role is concerned, farmers sometimes are very innovative. So if you look at that whole system, then you'll find that it is the farmers who suggested us to make what kind of changes in the machines that worked. It is farmers who suggested that we are getting problem of weeds. And it is the combination of farmers and scientists who suggested that it is resistance, which is serious, serious problem. And when you have a consensus building on that, farmers you know, told us that you can do anything you like on these fields because we want answers. The challenges that we have are so complex worldwide that we need to bring together all the knowledge and technologies that we have in the world. And that's the role that we have as CIMIT. So we connect with the advanced centers in the Netherlands, in the US, in the UK, also in Australia and in China. And we work together with the national centers and the small businesses and industry and NGOs in Africa, Asia and South, Middle South America for innovation for smallholder farmers. Because of those relationships, we are able to provide nearly $4 billion in benefits for farmers and other stakeholders in the value chain annually. Well, without partners, CIMIT would be nothing. Without partners, we would have no impact. And fortunately, 50 years of history, a history like Norman Borlaug, put us really in the center of many, many partnerships. I think CIMIT is very proud of routinely collaborating with hundreds of partner organizations how do we bring that around the table? How do we work with them? I mean, first of all, that we let everybody do what they are best at. So our collaboration is in fact becoming stronger and stronger because we are learning from one another and also we are now connecting to private sector. And also we are connecting to all those centers which are not so strong. Because in India, some centers are very strong, some are not very strong. So according to their need based, we are connecting to them based on that principle of complementation. CIMIT has to do something together with the partners to avoid the next food crisis because there are all the signs that the food crisis can come. This is stemming from the increase in human population. When you look at that, with the challenges of climate change, climate change will come with the higher temperatures. It will also affect the incidences of diseases and the pests. We now know that heat stress is also not good. And so all these um, are a recipe of a food crisis. And what I do think is that there has to be investment in agriculture. There has to be an investment, especially in the research, because the way we are growing crops today, or the way we have grown them in the last 50 years, is not going to work in the other years. We have to absolutely to come up with new technologies. New technologies to address those stresses.
50 years ago, CIMIT was ready to fight the issues of those days. This was a major hunger in the Indo-Gagatric Plain area with Pakistan and India, and also here in Mexico. Today, CIMIT, together with all its partners worldwide, we are ready to combat the challenges that we face.